so we'll start reading okay but before that let me tell you about shankara why he is uh, talking about shankara the buddhist there are three levels of philosophies okay the first level is very clear the mayavada philosophy and the buddhistic philosophy they say very clearly the physical world is unreal there is no reality at all maybe they don't mean that but when they put it into words that's what it means the physical world is unreal and the only reality is the brahman consciousness which is absolutely without features that's why you can't describe what it is okay that's what the first philosophy says second philosophy is shankara's shankara says the world is not unreal it is real in time and space so if you want to say i define reality as something that is always 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 existing then the mayavada philosophy is right okay but shankara says that there can be a reality in time and space it may disappear but the world never disappears the world is always there forms in the world disappear so there is again and then in other words the although the uh, divine is there in the universe okay sarvam kalu idam brahman he accepts all the upanishads shankara so but he says that if you want to get the divine pure and simple and not as in the physical world you have to go up okay in other words there is still a dichotomy the first one no connection at all between brahman and the world the second one shankara philosophy there is some reality of the divine in the physical world but if you want the divine pure and simple and without any complications you want the oneness you have to go up you can't get it down below sriam do philosophy is the third one and says that sorry i can't agree <laughs> what i say is that the divine is here also and even when you are in your body mind life you can experience the divine but you will experience him in multiplicity you will experience him in multiplicity but why do you want to deny the reality of multiplicity that's another way of looking that's what sirmu says but he admits that the highest level is the pure brahman the oneness if you want to experience yes you have to go up but if you want to experience the divine in multiplicity which is very possible and also it's a wonderful thing why do you want to reject that so that disconnection is there in shankara's philosophy so sirendra wants to go even beyond that but he gives very high praise to shankara because shankara denies the unreality of the world it is not unreal the divine is here but you will see him through multiplicity you will see him in forms you will see the forms and you will see him. okay so this is the three levels that he is talking about now we'll read the paragraph so who will read arjuna ji said that she has to go away so will you read first do we have an option yes sir okay then read the okay. paragraph okay okay in the in the philosophy of shankara one feels the presence of a conflict an opposition which this powerful intellect has stated with full force and masterfully arranged rather than solved with any finality the conflict of an intuition intensely aware of an absolute transcendence and inmost reality and a strong intellectual reason regarding the world with a keen and vigorous rational intelligence the intellect of the thinker regards the phenomenal world from the standpoint of the reason reason is there the judge and the authority and no supra rational authority can prevail against it but behind the phenomenal world is a transcendent reality which the intuition alone can their reason at least a finite dividing limited reason cannot prevail against the intuitive experience it cannot even relate the two it cannot therefore therefore solve the mystery of the universe the reason has to affirm the reality of the phenomenal existence to affirm its truth as valid but they are valid only in the phenomenal existence this phenomenal existence is real because it is a temporal phenomena phenomena of the eternal existence the reality but it is not itself that reality and when we pass beyond the phenomena to the real it still exists 
but is no longer valid to our consciousness. It is therefore unreal. Shankara takes up this contradiction, this opposition which is normal to our mental consciousness, when it becomes aware of both sides of existence and stands between them. He resolves it by obliging the reason to recognize its limits, in which its unimpaired sovereignty is left to it within its own cosmic province, and to acquiesce in the soul's intuition of the transcendent reality, and to support by a dialectic which ends by dissolving the whole cosmic phenomenon and rational practical edifice of it. Its escape from the limitations constructed and imposed on the mind by mind. The explanation of cosmic existence by which this is brought about seems to be, or so we may translate it to our understanding, for there have been different expositions of this profound and subtle philosophy, that there is a transcendence which is forever self-existent and immutable, and the world which is only phenomenal and temporal. The eternal, sorry, the eternal reality manifests itself in regard to the phenomenal world as self and issue. The Ishwara, by his Maya, his power of phenomenal creation, constructs this world as a temporal phenomena, and this phenomena of things which do not exist in the utterly real is imposed by Maya through a conceptive and perceptive consciousness on the superconscient or purely self-conscient reality. Brahman, the reality, appears in the phenomenal existence as the self of the living individual. But when the individuality of the individual is dissolved by intuitive knowledge, the phenomenal being is released into self-being. It is no longer subject to Maya, and by its release from the appearance of individuality, it is extinguished in the reality. But the world continues to exist without beginning or end as the Maya creation of the Ishwara. Yeah. So this is, he is exposing, he is ex explaining Shankara's philosophy in beautiful ways. Okay, while reading it, something very interesting struck me and I will share it with you. Okay, so what Shankara is saying is that the physical world and the Brahman world are two different worlds altogether. And if you want to see the Brahman world, you have to use reason. You can't use intuition there, it is not available. And if you want to see the Brahman con Brahman world, you have to use intuition and reason is not available there. Okay. So this is, so it's a totally different world and you have to use different instruments of knowledge. It is exactly like, okay, it will make it even clearer. If I want to see the atoms, I have to use a electronic microscope. Okay. Then I can see the atoms. But if I want to see the largest stars in the universe, I have to use not a atomic microscope, but I have to use a telescope. The telescope is not valid in the atomic world. And the, in the universal world, the microscope is of no use at all. So this is the, the microscope is reason. And the, um, the telescope is intuition. So this is, and Srivanda is giving very high praise. He says it's a very subtle and deep philosophy. This is the only way he explains, and both are real, and you have to use different instruments of knowledge. Okay, so, but this is what Srivanda says, and then he, now what Shankara is saying, Srivanda's exposition. Beautiful. So we will now go into each sentence. It's a huge para, no? more than two pages. <laughs> 47, yeah, I have to, so, shall we read, um, shall we, because it is now 8, 10, uh, but we will not be able to finish it, because it's a huge para, so what do we do, uh, should we cancel the class and wait for the others to come, or do we, because even if I, we are recording, I will not be able to finish it, it's two and a half pages nearly. It matters, it matters little, we can do even one third of the para, why waste time? Okay, all right. I'm just yes, we can do it like we have done before, also, Rangada. Half the paragraph we have stopped. So many times. Okay, we right. we'll do that. So now let's take up each sentence. In the philosophy of Shankara, 
he is definitely speaking of shankara philosophy and not the mayavada although mayavada philosophy is attributed to shankara through a misunderstanding okay he is not a mayavadin because we are saying afterwards that this philosophy is interpreted so many different ways it is so subtle that different people understand shankara philosophy in a different way okay in the philosophy of shankara one feels the presence of a conflict now note that there is no absolute conflict like in the mayavada but you feel that there is a difference okay? he is making a difference whereas shankara says there is no difference the divine is there everywhere in grades okay it's very subtle okay so an opposition one feels the presence of an opposition of a conflict conflict between what and what conflict between spirit and matter conflict between the one and the many the conflict between the formless and the form okay so this is the conflict that you see an opposition which this powerful intellect look at the praise he is giving shankara powerful intellect has stated with full force and masterfully arranged rather than solved <laughs> with any finality because what would be the solution according to sri ramana the solution will be when a divine life on earth is possible but shankara does not go that far neither does the gita the gita also does not go that far it says you can remain in the physical world and have a divine consciousness but the transformation of the world itself is not there in the gita and sri ramana says in the essays he says that maybe it is not yet time that's why <laughs> okay so <clears throat> the conflict of an intuition intensely aware of an absolute transcendent and inmost reality and a strong intellectual reason regarding the world with a keen and vigorous rational intelligence so such so clearly he is telling at the higher level intuition works and that intuition what does it see it sees absolutely transcendent and inmost reality inmost reality the world is outermost reality okay and a strong intellectual reason regarding regarding the world with a keen and vigorous rational intelligence he has both shankara has intuition as well as reason but there is a difference between the two reason and intelligence belong to two different regions altogether okay in uh, intuition belongs to the intuitive mind in the spiritual planes of consciousness which we call level 2 and reason is at level 1 okay so and the two have they are quite different in character reason starts dividing for clarity's sake intuition does not divide it synthesizes it sees everything in one go that's what i am saying so the intellect of the thinker regards the phenomenal world from the standpoint of the reason so when you are in the physical world you have to see with reason okay? reason is there the judge and the authority and no supra rational authority can prevail against it okay but this is uh, shankara philosophy shrendu is not giving his own okay because shrendu will tell you afterwards that even the intuition can work in the physical world okay he will tell you that it's very clear na because what about the instinct of animals its intuition so it is working in the physical world but shankara says no the intuition is available only there and reason is available here but shrimda will not agree fully with that because there is a interpenetration of all the planes you remember even the supermind is there in matter but hiding okay so it has to be brought out so intuition can be brought out even at the physical level and you can see that sometimes poetry for instance comes from the intuitive level you get intimations from the intuitive level when people are uh, people like uh, newton and uh, einstein they also intuition is coming into their head okay so shrimda will not agree with that but he is stating the shankara philosophy okay the intellect of the thinker regards the phenomenal world from the standpoint of the reason reason is there the judge and the authority and no supra rational authority can prevail against it okay so 
in fact this is true because if uh, someone says even when uh, uh, einstein said that there is a theory of relativity the reason the rationality of the scientists did not agree okay they said no no we want proof in the physical world and so they set up a uh, they set up a, an experiment when there was a solar uh, eclipse going to take place what they did was they went all they rushed to that place uh, in the world where there was a solar total solar eclipse and then they found that yes light is particle it is substance and it is also um, it is bending light is not going straight it, it is subject to gravitation then they believed what einstein is saying so they want to use reason the same thing happened with our mathematician also if you remember hardy his mentor and his uh, teacher is telling him that you have to use reason here you can't use intuition whereas uh, ramanujam that genius mathematician the world is still marveling at his um, magnificent mathematical uh, formulas okay he says no uh, my goddess is sending me intuition i know that these things are real but i can't explain the reason so very clearly you can see in these two cases that uh, in einstein's case intuition working and the others had to prove it with reason and in Shank- uh, ramanujam's case he could not prove but the now after he has died in 1930s okay ramanujam died very young okay because he could not he was a pakka of south indian uh, surviving only on rice and sambar <laughs> he could not tolerate the cold and the food there in in europe in london so he had to come back to india and he died very young he had tb so this is the difference and this difference is brought out so clearly in shankara's philosophy intuition cannot be used he says in the physical world you have to use only reason and in the spiritual world you cannot use reason reason is incompatible it is not even available because it sees oneness it does not see the many so this is what he is saying i read the next sentence the intellect of the thinker regards the phenomenal world from the standpoint of the reason reason is there the judge and the authority and no supra rational authority can prevail against it this is not sir those idea it is shankara's idea but behind the phenomenal world is a transcendent reality so that he accepts sarvam khalu idam brahman okay there is a reality behind all the physical forms even behind a stone even behind a tree even behind a mountain the divine presence is there which the intuition alone can see if you in the physical world you will not be able to see the uh, divine presence with your reason but if you go to the higher level of consciousness you will be able to see behind the forms also you will able to see but that is available only up <laughs> okay it can't be brought down that's what he said uh, is a transcendent reality which the intuition alone can see there reason at least a finite dividing limited reason cannot prevail against the intuitive experience reason is not available at the higher level but why is it saying at least a finite dividing limiting reason because he says that there is a infinite rationality and there is a finite rationality the the higher uh, world there is no illogicality there is it is not illogical it is the logic of the finite and the logic of the infinite that's why he is saying this in um, in a parenthetical phrase at least a finite dividing limiting reason whereas in the shrimbo says that in the higher planes of consciousness reason becomes logic of the infinite so it does not it does not remain finite and does not divide and it's not limited but it's reason which becomes infinite okay that's why he has put that cannot prevail against the intuitive experience it cannot even now he is coming back to the shankara philosophy it cannot even relate the two the two are unconnected 
it cannot therefore solve the mystery of the universe. Whereas Sri Ramana is solving the mystery of the universe by insisting that the intuition can come down here. Not only intuition, even overmind can come down here, even supermind can come down here because it is already there. So this is the difference between, the difference is clear now between Shankara and Sri Ramana. The three grades become very clear now. The Mayavada philosophy, Buddhistic philosophy, which says the world is unreal. The only reality is up there. Shankara says, no, there is a connection. No, sorry, there is no connection. But you can go from one to the other. Then comes Ramana and says, it's true that you can go from one to the other, but there is a very subtle connection which can be built. And it is being built by nature. That is evolution. Okay, so this is what Sri is saying. The reason has to affirm, I'm reading the next sentence. So Shankara cannot solve the mystery of the universe. And what is the mystery of the universe? That the world seems to be unreal. Okay, this is the mystery that he can't solve. So, the reason has to affirm the reality of the phenomenal existence to affirm its truth as valid. But there, but they are valid only in that phenomenal existence. The world is absolutely real to reason. Okay? That's what he's saying. But if you use intuition, you go to the intuition, the world loses its validity. It seems to be unreal. The reason has to affirm the reality of the phenomenal existence, to affirm its truths as well. But they are valid only in that phenomenal existence. He is continuing Shankara philosophy. Remember, this phenomenal existence and the world, that's the world. Phenomenal existence, when he says, it means the physical world, where transience is the law, okay? is real because it's a temporal phenomenon of the eternal existence. The physical world is a temporal phenomenon of the absolute reality. It is like, if you want to take a, an example, a uh, little far-fetched, but still it, it can help. Okay? If you, you have the ocean, up there in the, you have the pure ocean, and that ocean makes a little bit of a form, and you have a glass of water at the bottom. Essentially, they are the same, but the glass of water is not the ocean. The ocean is much more than that. But essentially, they are the same. That essentiality is what is stressed in the Advaita philosophy. Okay. This phenomenal existence is real because it's a temporal phenomenon of the eternal existence, the reality. But it is not itself that reality. The world is not the absolute reality. It's a reflection of it or it's a deformed or diminished form. That's what he's saying. And when we pass beyond the phenomenal to the real, it still exists. What exists? The world exists, but it is no longer valid to our consciousness. In other words, when you go from India to England, now you are not experiencing India anymore, but that doesn't mean to say that India is unreal. <laughs> it continues to exist. For you, it is not existing. When you go to UK, UK is existing for you, but not India. It's only a a vague idea in the mind. It's not real anymore. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> the phenomenon is real. It still exists. The world still exists. But it's no longer valid to our consciousness. It is therefore unreal. So you are changing the definition of reality and unreality. Shankara takes up this contradiction, this opposition, which is normal to our mental consciousness when it becomes aware of both sides of existence and stands between them. In other words, when you are in the spiritual planes of consciousness, you are partly in the physical world and partly in the higher world, the third level. In the second level, you see both, but you see a, a dichotomy between the two. That is the experience of all spiritual people and Sri was therefore not satisfied and he wanted to go to the third level, which he managed to do. And that would be the solution to the problem of the reality or the unreality of the physical world. Okay? <clears throat> By, uh, it becomes... Uh, un uh, Shankara takes up this contradiction, this opposition, 
which is normal to our mental consciousness when it becomes aware of both sides of existence and stands between them so you are in the level 2 you are in the spiritual planes of consciousness right up to the over mind huh? even if you are in the over mind you see a dichotomy between the world and the brahman in other words you are aware of both purusha as well as prakriti you see them together you see both are there but they don't seem to be one okay that's what he is saying <coughs> by uh, and stand between them he resolves who he is the shankara he resolves it by obliging the reason to recognize its limits in which its unimpaired sovereignty is left to it within its own cosmic province in other words reason is absolutely valid in the physical world but it has no validity at all in the higher world it cannot be used it is useless instrument just like as i said the electronic microscope is very very necessary and valid for watching things at the atomic level okay at the molecular level atomic level maybe i don't know but molecular level definitely you have to use an electronic microscope but when you want to see the larger stars in the universe that electronic microscope is absolutely useless you have to use a telescope you have to use a different and the telescope is the intuition and the electronic microscope is the reason and the two have nothing to do with each other they are two different instruments of knowledge okay so so um in its uh, yeah where is it gone yeah he resolves it by obliging the reason to recognize its limits in which its unimpaired sovereignty is left to it within its own cosmic province reason is very very valid at the physical level and to acquiesce to agree the word acquiesce means to agree in the soul's intuition of the transcendent reality and to support by a dialectic which ends by dissolving the whole cosmic phenomenal world and rational practical edifice of things its escape from the limitations constructed and imposed on the mind by maya so the explanation of cosmic existence by which this is brought about seems to be now i'll skip three lines because there is a uh, dash so i'll skip the three lines and go to the the complete sentence we'll read that the explanation of cosmic existence by which this is brought about seems to be that there is a transcendence which is forever self existent and immutable and a world which is only phenomenal and temporal so this is the sentence then he is giving a um, parenthetical explanation between the dashes so that we'll read now or so we may translate it to our understanding for there have been different expositions of this profound and subtle philosophy there you are so still they're saying shankara philosophy is profound and subtle philosophy many many different people have understood in different ways that there is a transcendence which is forever self existent and immutable in a timeless the transcendent is timeless the physical world is in time and space okay that's a dichotomy which he feels in shankara's philosophy okay the eternal reality manifests itself in regard to the phenomenal world as self and ishvara the eternal reality manifests itself in regard to the phenomenal world as self and ishvara the ultimate reality you can experience in the self and ishvara the ishvara by his maya his power of phenomenal creation constructs his world as a temporal phenomenon and this phenomenon of things which do not exist in the utterly real is imposed by maya through our conceptive and perceptive consciousness on the superconscious or purely self conscious reality so shankara is saying in fact uh, he uses in sanskrit he uses the word darpana drishyam okay 
that means the physical world is a reflection in the mirror of the reality it's a reflection it's not the reality but it's a reflection darpan drishya you see it as though it's in a mirror you don't see the reality you see a reflection so that's the difference there is a difference between the reality and the image in the mirror okay so they what is saying so um brahman the reality appears in the phenomenal existence as a self of the living individual okay brahman the reality appears in the phenomenal world as a self of the living individual but when the individuality of the individuality is dissolved by intuitive knowledge the phenomenal being is released into self being okay it is no longer subject to maya and by its release from the appearance of individuality it is extinguished in the reality But the world continues to exist without beginning or end as the magic creation of the Ishvara. So, we, to understand what Shri is saying here, the Shankara philosophy again think of the grain of salt and the salt which is dissolved in the ocean. The individuality of the individual is the ego, and what is that ego? Form, limitation, body, mind, life. Okay. that disappears okay the world disappears it's only a reflection when you go to that level of consciousness your ego disappears is dissolved the form shape color taste the taste remains the essentiality remains but the form shape color weight size disappears the phenomenal being is released into self being it is no longer subject to maya and by its release from the appearance of individuality it is extinguished in the reality the reality is the ocean the salty ocean and the phenomenal phenomenality if you want is the size shape color weight of the salt grain that disappears so we have been able to finish i am surprised okay so very clear beautiful explanation of the shankaran philosophy with which shankara does not agree fully he says that no the <laughs> telescope can also be used in the physical world science will not agree <laughs> okay and it is possible also to see the and use the microscope also in the higher level of consciousness he say <laughs> i'm putting it in a very uh, crude manner but it is possible to have the consciousness of the continuity and evolution is slowly making the possibility a reality evolution is making it is not yet come but it will come okay but that's what he said so we stop here yes yeah. yeah. okay to what what this is an arrangement okay yeah we'll go to the next one this is an arrangement yeah yes we'll go from this is an arrangement we can actually thank you okay i'll try thank you